fired up and, uh, you know, guys playing with a chip on their shoulder, and that's what you want. Some might say that's what's been missing from this program for a while. Did you like seeing that as a coach? Um, you know, I would say um, as a program, yeah. Things need to be more like that. I think the defense has been like that for a long time. And I think it's been on the offense for a while. I think the offense has kind of lost it um, in the last maybe two or three years. But I think with Coach and I back, I think they gained a little bit of that last year. And uh, I think more will come this year. Is this the fastest you've gotten to the scuffling here in spring? Because second practice, that's pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, no, it was good. No, I, <laughs> you know what? I think it's just guys being competitive and, you know, guys flying around and having fun when they want to win and they're trying to compete. And when that happens, usually guys end up on the ground. And then, you know, usually might, there might be a coach that might say, hey, you need to, you know, try a little harder or block this guy a little longer. And, and uh, you know, I think there was probably a little too much of that today. We don't want to get guys hurt, especially in a day like today where we're not in pads. Um, you'd like to see guys off the ground as much as possible. And, you know, we're always as coaches trying to remind them to stay up. Um, but, yeah, the little scuffles like that, it's, that's going to happen in football, right? There's a lot of testosterone out there, and guys are getting fired up and having fun, and we just need to kind of control that a little bit. Remember, we're teammates, and we're all out there trying to help each other. Did you ever get in a fight? Never. When you were playing? Never. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> coaches often, or players oftentimes reflect the nature of the coaches. Um, coach Two J was uh, was mentored by Coach Roger French. Is the offensive line kind of taking on more his his mean and gritty disposition? Yeah, you oh, yeah, definitely. That? You can see that from Two J. That uh, you know, I think last year it was a transition for them to kind of get that type of coaching. That um, what his style's like. And uh, I think as he's continuing to be with them in the meeting rooms and out on the field, they're going to continue to get that personality that I think the old BYU offensive line had back in the 80s and 90s when they were under Roger French. And that's just the you know characteristics that he wants to bring to those guys. And it's fun to see that come out, you know, because you know I've been here nine years or eight years, I haven't seen that. So yeah. talk about Bronson. Yeah, Bronson uh, is making the transition well right now to outside backer. His first two days, I've uh, been super impressed with him. He's going to be great off the edge. And we knew that, you know, the last two seasons when he was really productive is when he was coming off the edge. And uh, I think, you know, he's not going to be like Kyle. He's not the athlete that Kyle is, but he's a different type of athlete. And he'll, we'll be able to do some different things with him that we weren't able to do with Kyle and some stuff that we did with Kyle that we won't be able to do with Bronson. So it's just some game planning and schematic things that we'll have to change up just a little bit. But I've been very impressed with him and uh, look forward to continuing to work with him and get him to – reach his potential. What do you remember from the decision when, when it was made and, and you know all the pieces that went into to deciding to have him take that, that spot? It was pretty easy. It was just, hey, let's move Bronson outside back. <laughs> um, Kyle we're, left, and really we didn't have any experience there. We were looking, pro we were looking for another player that had experience at outside, or just playing experience. And uh, Bronson kind of fit the mold. We had a lot of guys coming off the missions as defense alignment, guys that had played Bronson, or uh, Graham Rowley and Travis Tuiloma. And Kesney uh, Tausing has been a super Super surprise. He's been, I mean, that dude is going to be a great player for us. And uh, so having just those three guys back added upon the guys that we've had last year there, that was, a, it was an easy decision for us to move Bronson. What, what's the biggest learning curve for him switching to that position? It's the coverage part. So the run fits he'll be fine with, the pass rush stuff he's fine with. It's just the coverage. He's, he didn't do that much. He did a little bit of that as the season went on last year. After Spencer got hurt, we moved Bronson to Spencer's spot um, in nickel, and he started to do more coverage drops there. But um, where he's at now at Will Backer, he's doing buzz drops where flap drops, and so he's going to have to get that down. And just learning the, the whole coverage of how it all works and where he fits and everything, he has a long way to go that way. He's so tall, can he just go out there and lift up his arm? Yeah, I mean, <coughs> we had that happen a couple of times last year. You know, Kyle's pick six versus Utah State, and uh, Alani's pick six versus Georgia Tech. And so I, I can imagine, you know, having Bronson six, seven and his week span and all that, I think he's going to get some of those for him. Is his going to be more of a hybrid position where he puts his fist down into the dirt often? No, I don't think he'll ever have his hand down. He'll always be up in a two-point stance. And so the quarterback and the offense really never knows, is he going to be rushing off the edge or is he going to be dropping into coverage? It's, sometimes it's hard to do that when a guy's in a three-point stance because they don't have great vision when they drop. Some teams do that. We don't do that. He'll be, he'll be standing up in a two-point stance. In the 3-4 defense, when you talk about coverage, is he going to be covering actually like wide receivers or actually tight ends downfield? Or is it just more just a, a man coverage in a specific For him, area? it's more just flat drops. He'll be just mainly, as the wheel backer, you're mainly just dropping to the flat and covering that area. Is it because that. of the flexibility of the 3-4 defense to bring in a nickel back, like a Dallin Lovett? Yeah, so we'll have Dallin there or Trent Trammell. Or, I mean, mm -hmm. there's a million guys. that I mean, we had, we're really deep at DB right now, and so – um, it's not like back in the day when we had to play with walk-ons. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. But no, they're, we're deep. <laughs> we're deep at uh, DB, and so we're going to try to get it, you know, as many, as often as we can in the right situations, get five DBs on the field, possibly six, just depending upon, 
you know, how some other guys develop.